I find that the apps today just simply do not measure up to the apps of yesteryear. So this video is dedicated to those apps that are no longer with us. Actions by Useful Apps was a utility app that enabled you to control apps on your Mac from your iPad. Actions, later known as Quadro, could be used to create a set of commands for apps like Safari, Chrome, Keynote, iTunes, Preview, and the Finder window. In Finder, for example, you could create commands to open and close windows, add a new folder, launch Quick Looks, Info tab, and duplicate files. Actions was one of a kind, so we may not see another app quite like it for some time. Adobe Photoshop Touch was arguably the best photo editor ever designed for iOS. The app included a wide range of adjustment tools, filters, artistic effects, layers, and masking, along with an amazing user interface that was ideally suited for touchscreens. Some suggested that Adobe wanted to support other apps with specific features rather than all-in-one solutions like PS Touch. I personally don't buy it and will never understand why they canceled such a superb photo editor. Airmail by Chilingo was an exciting game for iOS that let you deliver mail from an airplane to different islands across the region. Mail was delivered when you were able to land on specific targets. The flight simulations were experienced in three dimensions as you traveled through beautifully illustrated islands. Some felt the app was too childlike, but as an adult, I enjoyed it immensely. Art Lab by MOBA was arguably the best museum app ever designed for iOS. As you would expect, Art Lab included creative activities and lessons inspired by works of art in MoMA's collection. Art Lab also included a digital canvas with a library of shapes and colors that could be used to create your own artwork, which you could save to your project library. Museum apps come and go, but this app left a lasting impression. Coast by Opera exemplified some of the earlier innovations for browser apps for iOS. Coast generated thumbnails to represent bookmarks and floating carousel pages to represent your browsing history. Coast felt more like an app than a browser, which is why it stood out in this genre. The app is sorely missed because browser apps today are pretty lackluster. Color Mixer by Ricardo Da Silva was an art app made for the Mac. Designed for young audiences, Color Mixer included a library of line drawings and virtual palettes for mixing colors together, as well as the ability to paint and draw on a blank canvas. Colors were created using a mixing bowl, which you could control by degrees. I once installed this app in a family interactive gallery, and kids really enjoyed it. The Design Museum was another great iOS museum app. It included a tile interface, which you could navigate by swiping through the columns and rows that featured objects from the collection. Each item could be viewed in full screen mode and you could save specific examples to your favorite folder. The app included a bold use of typography and short videos that featured museum curators. The app was a great resource for design fans, but also for any audience. Kid Picks by Software Makiev was a dynamic multimedia video creation tool for the Mac that was intended for young audiences. KidPix was rich with resources including static and animated backgrounds, 3D animated characters and scenes, sound effects, stickers, and movies, all of which could be accessed from the colorful menus along the edges. Inside this spacecraft-like environment, you could combine multiple scenes with transitions and export them together as your final movie project. I have yet to see a Mac app for kids that measures up to this one. Ibix Author by Apple was a rich interactive multimedia platform for creating digital books. The app includes a range of beautiful templates and widgets that let you add popover, slideshows, multiple choice quizzes, maps, 3D objects, and HTML content. When it was first released, I thought it was going to be a game changer, but the Amazon scandal that crippled the iBookstore subsequently killed this app's momentum. iWeb for the Mac was Apple's foray into WYSIWYG website editors. Users could easily add text, photos, and videos to web pages and publish them to Apple's servers. The sites also include the ability to publish audio and video podcasts. Like iBooks author, this app should have been a game changer, especially with the advent of Apple's expansive use of iCloud storage, along with the latest developments in responsive websites and the expanded interest in podcasts. What a waste.
Infinity Blade by Chair Entertainment was one of the first apps to introduce immersive battle scenes as part of a touchscreen experience. The app included impressive illustrations, beautiful landscape environments, and user tools for defending blows from the enemy, while including a nice array of attack gestures. The app won its share of awards, and rightfully so. Leonardo was a contemporary of PS Touch and rivaled the app's inclusion of rich editing tools such as masking, layers, effects, adjustments, and the ability to save projects as PSD files. You can probably still find this app in the App Store, but the developer is actively pushing users to download Superimpose X as a replacement. Zyda by Zyda was one of the leading newsreaders for iOS. Zyda was primarily known for its algorithm which personalized stories according to your interests. The app was eventually purchased by Flipboard, another example of the big guy swallowing up the little guy. Vodio by Vodio Labs was a video news app for iOS. The format was a rotating carousel of videos arranged by themes. It was basically the video version of a newsreader. The interface was fun to use and great if you preferred video to reading text. This app would be very useful in today's market. Too bad that it's no longer available. Pulse by Alfonso Labs Incorporated was my favorite newsreader of all times. The app perfected the use of the tile interface, which lets you set up your feeds by themes. While reading individual stories, a scrolling thumbnail bar along the bottom gave you quick access to other news. Pulse also included a me section for saving your favorite articles, one of the first efforts to incorporate a save it for later feature largely attributed to apps like Instapaper. Pulse was also the first app to replicate the viewing experience in a browser. Yes, before Flipboard, the company was bought out by LinkedIn. Bummer. Trace by Relentless Software was a brilliantly designed murder mystery crime solving app. The app included 3D virtual scenes that enable you to investigate different crime scenes at various locations. In each 3D space, you could search and scan for traces of evidence to complete different stages of the investigation. I have yet to find a murder mystery app that matches the quality of this one. Photo Forge 2 by Ghostbird Software was a superb and innovative photo editor. It was one of the first to include layers, but also include a carousel menu that was rich with adjustment and editing tools, including maskings and effects. It was a universal app, but the iPhone version was the first example of how a small handheld device could incorporate a wide range of features. There are a few apps that compare even today, and now we are stuck with expensive subscription fees. So disappointing. Gridator by Tai Shimizu was an iOS app that brilliantly used the grid format in an intelligent and practical way. Grids gave you a visual way to scan varying degrees of lightness and saturation with additional menu adjustments once a grid was selected. This app was great for those people who are visual learners. Photogene by Mobile Pond was one of the first photo editors for iOS to include a boatload of features, including the ability to customize project sizes and aspect ratios. The app included a wide range of adjustment tools and effects, including a healing tool. It is apps like these that paved the way for future photo editors. Quickie by Quickie was an intelligent pictorial synthesis of Wikipedia and newsreaders. The app included an integrated TTS or text-to-speech technology that recited information and news to you. Content was also generated to suit your particular interests. Today, you can rarely find apps that use TTS technology in this way, let alone provide innovative and practical solutions like this one. Umano by So3 Incorporated was another very impressive app that integrated TTS technology, but in a format specifically designed for news. The sleek design recalled Zyda, but included intelligent voices to narrate the news for you. The narrations were some of the best examples of natural human voices as opposed to the robotic voices we had become accustomed to. Desconnect by Desconnect was the first app to successfully demonstrate in practical ways how media files could be shared between computers and devices over Wi-Fi. It was essentially a precursor to Apple's AirPlay, which was issued by Apple not long after the app's release, which explains why it did not last very long. Storehouse by Marquano was a beautiful and superb way to read and post blog journals and personal stories. The interface flowed like butter, both in terms of browsing and laying out content. You can very easily add photos and videos that easily snapped into place in various configurations. It was not surprising that professional authors gravitated to this app because it was that impressive. Quano, by the way, was a former designer for Apple. 
Mixel by Koi Vin was arguably the most innovative art creation and sharing app ever created for iOS. Mixel actively encouraged users to share creations and the content contained within them with other creators to use and recreate. Mixel demonstrated that the creative process can be collective and participatory, downplaying the egocentric emphasis that still drives most apps today. Of all the apps featured, I miss this one the most. Paper by Facebook was an excellent example of a newsreader that integrated seamlessly into your Facebook feeds. The designers who gave us paper created a beautiful interface that enabled you to access stories by themes using swiping gestures, integrating content from your news feeds and business pages. I am no longer a Facebook user, but at the time, this product blew me away. This app was only designed for the iPhone, which was a huge flaw, mainly because Facebook has refused to accept iPads as mobile devices. Pool Bar by Future Games of London was by far the best pool and billiards game ever created for iOS. The 3D graphics and virtual environments were superb and the controls used to position and control the cue ball were excellent. So many other apps have come and gone, but they never seem to measure up to this one. iPhoto was Apple's first attempt to introduce a photo editor for iOS. Up until this point, Apple's main focus was the photo library and storage. What really stood out were the beautiful pictorial graphics and virtual brush tools that made the app a joy to use. Critics found the app to be too gimmicky and conflicted with Apple's emerging philosophy to flatten everything out or, as Johnny Ives would say, get design out of the way. As a result, the app had a very short shelf life. Apps today are largely driven by profit-driven motives, which is why they're not as great as they used to be. That's why I think it's very important to honor those great apps that laid the foundation for what is possible today. My name is Tim Brown. Check me out next time.